여러분, 우리가 흔히 아는 CEO는 어떤 모습인가요? 회의실에 앉아있고, 보고서 검토하고, 부사장 등 임원진들과 얘기하는 사람들 떠오르시죠? 근데 오늘 보실 인터뷰는 완전히 반대입니다. 일론이 테슬라를 어떻게 운영하는지, 그리고 안드레이가 직접 경험한 그 독특한 리더십을 들어보면 아, 이래서 테슬라가 남들과 다르구나 하고 느끼실 거예요. 오늘 만나볼 안드레이는 테슬라에서 2017년 6월부터 2022년 7월까지 AI와 오토파일럿 비전을 끌었으며 AI 총괄이 사직을 역임했습니다. 자타공인 딥러닝 분야의 대가이자 오픈 AI 공동 창립자로도 잘 알려져 있죠. 이제 그가 직접 밝힌 일론 머스크의 독특한 리더십 이야기 함께 들어볼까요? 자, 준비되셨죠? 이제 시작합니다. I would say definitely Elon runs his companies in extremely unique style. I don't actually think that people appreciate how unique it is. You sort of like even read about it and so on, but you don't understand it, I think. <laughs> It's like even hard to describe. I don't even know where to start. But well, number one is like, so he likes very small, strong, highly technical uh, teams. I would say at companies by default, the teams grow and they get large. Uh, Elon was always like a force against growth. I would have to work and expend effort to hire people. I would have to like basically bleed to hire people. Um, and then the other thing is that big companies, it's really hard to get rid of low performers. And I think uh, Elon is very friendly to, by default, getting, getting rid of low performers. So I actually had to fight for people to keep them on the team uh, because he would, by default, want to uh, remove people. So keep a small, strong, highly technical team. Uh, no middle management that is kind of like uh, non-technical for sure. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is kind of like the vibes of how, this is, how everything runs and how it feels when he sort of like walks into the office. He wants it to be a vibrant place. People are walking around, they're pacing around, uh, they're working on exciting stuff, they're charting something, they're coding, you know. He doesn't like stagnation, he doesn't like to look, for it to look that way. He doesn't like large meetings. He always encourages people to like leave meetings if they're not being useful. Uh, so actually you do see this, or you know, it's a large meeting and some, if you're not contributing and you're not learning, just walk out. And this is like fully encouraged. And I think this is something that you don't normally see. I think a lot of big, com big companies, they like pamper employees. I think like there's much less of that. The culture of it is you're there to do your best technical work and there's the intensity and, and so on. And I think maybe the last one that is very unique and very interesting and very strange is just how connected he is to the team. Uh, so usually a CEO of a company is like a remote person five layers up who talks to their VPs, who talk to their you know, reports and directors, and eventually you talk to your manager. That's not how he runs companies, right? Like he will come to the office, he will talk to the engineers. Normally people spend like 99% of the time maybe talking to the VPs, he spends maybe 50% of the time and he just wants to talk to the engineers. So if, if the team is small and strong, then engineers and the code are the source of truth. And so they have the source of truth, not some manager, and he wants to talk to them to understand the actual state of things mm -hmm. and what should be done to improve it. And also just like his large hammer and his willingness to exercise it within the organization. So maybe if he talks to the engineers and they bring up that, you know, what's blocking you? Okay, I, I just, I don't have enough GPUs to run my thing. And he's like, oh, okay. And if he, see, if he hears that twice, he's gonna be like, okay, this is a problem. So like, what is our timeline? And when, when you don't have satisfying answers, he's like, okay, I want to talk to the person in charge of the GPU cluster. And like someone dials the phone and he's just like, okay, double the cluster right now. <laughs> <laughs> like let's, let's have a meeting tomorrow. From now on, send me daily updates until the cluster is ha twice the size. And then they kind of like push back and they're like, okay, well, we have this procurement set up, we have this timeline and NVIDIA says that we don't have enough GP, uh, GPUs and it will take six months or something. And then you get a rise of an eyebrow and then he's like, okay, I want to talk to Jensen. And then he just kind of like removes bottlenecks. So I think the extent to which he's like extremely involved and removes bottlenecks and applies his hammer, I think is also like not appreciated. So I think there's like a lot of these kinds of aspects that are very unique, I would say, and very interesting. And honestly, like going to a normal company outside of that, you like definitely miss aspects of that. Maybe that's a long rant. I don't think I hit on all the points, but it is a very unique uh, thing and uh, it's very interesting. 어떠셨나요? 일론의 리더십. 진짜 보통 CEO와는 차원이 다르죠. 직접 사무실에 와서 엔지니어와 대화하고 CPU가 부족하다면 바로 젠슨 황에게 전화를 겁니다. 엔지니어링에 대한 인사이트로 빠른 의사결정을 내려 테슬라를 민첩하게 움직이게 하는 힘을 가지고 있습니다. 여러분은 어떻게 보셨나요? 독특하다고 생각되셨나요? 아니면 압도적이다라고 느껴지셨나요?